Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. I hope you brought your coffee because I'm going to be rambling here for a while. So, we're going to talk about my shop made battery charger for Ryobi batteries. And what makes this unique is that it, it works off of a 12 volt system. This is designed to be used in a vehicle. Plug into a cigarette lighter of any vehicle and be able to charge a Ryobi battery from this unit. And I know, I know, everybody's saying, well, you can already buy one. And yeah, you can. Uh, I think they go for about 50 to $60 as a general rule at the minimum what you're going to end up costing you. And there's a couple things about that thing I just don't like. Um, first off, like I said, the cost alone. I'm only going to have about $15 wrapped up in this. Maybe $16. i will see when I get done. And when I get the final version, I'll show it to you so you can see what we have. But it's going to be much better because it's going to be much more compact than their unit. It's going to be cheaper and it's going to be much more durable. Now think about it for a minute. If you're going to buy a 12 volt battery charger, why are you buying that? It's so that you can have it in the vehicle, your service vehicle, construction worker or something, and you need to carry that battery charger so you can charge your Ryobi batteries when you're out in the field by plugging it into your cigarette lighter on the vehicle. Take a look at that case and I guarantee you that any vehicle I've seen that's a work vehicle or a service vehicle, that case is not going to survive very well in that kind of in harsh environment. It just, at least it wouldn't in mine, I guarantee it. The cord doesn't really tuck away any way that I could tell. Um, and the case does not look very durable. The receptacle is, I, I can't help but feel it's the way it's designed, you can get debris in it. Where as this, I can set this down on a bench and any debris won't get in that. When it's sealed up completely, wherever I set that, it'll be protected on the receptacle from getting any debris or foreign matter in there. So it helps protect, it'll be a much better unit than that other than the one that you can buy. Like I said, it's cheaper. So these are some of the reasons why this is the way I really wanted to do mine. Um, I, the other thing is, is why am I doing it? Because I can. <laughs> I just thought it'd be neat to be able to make my own instead of buying one. So, uh, it's a lot of fun. I've really learned some things. I've learned some things about Ryobi batteries that I didn't know. And I'm going to be making a lot of different types of projects. So one of the things I really wanted to accomplish was being able to make my own receptacles easy to make out of regular common material so I don't have to special order something for the receptacle because that's the one thing you can't really buy out there very well without it costing you a pretty penny. You've seen what these 3D printers charge you for those things? Woo! Anyway, mine works perfectly. I can take a regular no-name black label battery or even a Ryobi factory battery, drop it on there and there it comes on. That means that it's hooked up. All I got to do is run my cigarette lighter. And I'll show you all that here in a minute. I'll show you how it works. It fits slightly tighter onto a Ryobi battery. So it's a little bit tighter pulling it back off. But it works fine. And so it'll work for these or these. Now just for so you know, when it's charging, the one thing this does not do, this charger that the regular factory one does, the Ryobi one, it does not update your status bar. So this battery doesn't have a status bar, so it doesn't even matter. But on a battery that has a status bar, it has usually four lights on it. When you push the button, you count the lights and it tells you how what the state of charge is roughly. The problem is this does not update that status. In order to update that status, you have to have a communication between the positive and this third terminal on the battery stem. This is the negative, this is the positive, and on the regular battery any equipment, you don't use this one. But it is needed to update that bar status. Now I found that if I've been charging it on here and that battery shows only three bars and it's fully charged, if I take it over and plug it in, it'll flash about three or four times and it'll go solid telling me the battery's fully charged. When I take it out, that'll also show fully charged there. So that is communicating with this in a way that I don't hear. There's that channel out there and I'll leave a link to his channel 
that did a lot of Ryobi battery stuff. And he did a solar generator. And on that video, he talks about how he put a communicator between here and here. And all that is, is a simple 1.2 kilo ohm resistor. And he, he soldered it to the positive connector on one end of that resistor. And the other end went to a clip that made contact here. So in order to do that on this, I would need to have that third terminal. Here I drilled the hole so that when I put this on there, positive, negative is here on my clip. Right there, I can see that third terminal, but there's nothing there. I have to have a way to connect that there. Now he did on his, this other gentleman, he has a clip that he makes that he can drop down onto that space that will touch there. So all you have to do is solder that resistor from that clip over to that terminal to get that communication for this. So when he plugged it in, this thing is flashing while it's charging. And once it's fully charged, you unplug it, this will show you the full state of charge if that's where it's at at that point. So do you need that? They're handy to have at times. When I'm out in the field and if I all of a sudden have to charge a battery, I leave with fully charged batteries. I make sure of that. But if I end up using a battery and I need to charge some up, um, I can quickly charge these up and use it. No big deal. When I get back to the shop, I plug them in there, let them update, and they're done. So I'm not worried about having that complexity of that communication for charging. I will also tell you that anything I've ever done with it discharging, that doesn't matter. This does not need updating while it's discharging. That will be accurate on that just by using this. Only during the charging process does this communication have to go on between these two terminals. So if it's important to you, you can do that so it'll update this as you're charging. I don't think I need to. So as long as you understand what's going on there. Other than that, this thing works fine. It does fully charge it. It runs just like it would anyway. It just is not updating the status bar information on your battery until you do that. The other thing I noticed is that if I'm using a no name and I don't know why, that's why I said what goes on in the Ryobi batteries, I don't quite understand. Excuse me, I don't understand everything. So if you understand something I don't know, I would love to hear information because I can't find much on it about this communication stuff. But if I take and put this on here, and I now read the voltage of this, if I now plug this in, it will start charging. I have this plugged into a, this is an inverter, 10 amp output, 12 and a half volts. And I just put my cigarette lighter in there to get my 12 volts. The booster will kick it up to 21 volts. So now I'm showing 13 volts, but I'm also showing amperage going into the battery. I'm putting a little over three amps in that battery and it's dropping slowly. As that battery charges this up, that will drop off. When that reaches that amperage reaches zero, this thing is fully charged. And that'll read by that 20.8 volts or whatever. And then this battery is fully charged. Whether or not this the status bar says so has to do with whether or not you put that third terminal connection in or not. So but it works perfectly and it works just as well on this one as it does that, except if I've already plugged into there first and I put this on here, I show the 20.8 volts, but it's not charging this. I have to actually unplug it. Now it's reading what voltage there is. And now I plug it in, now it's charging. So if you're doing a Ryobi battery, you have to plug it into here first and then in there. On one of these, you can do it either way. You can plug either one in first, either the battery or the source power. But you can't do that with these for some reason. So why is that different? I don't know. It doesn't seem to affect anything. But it's telling me that there's something going on there that I don't know. And if I knew it, maybe I could adjust for those sort of things so that it would work in the same way consistently, but it's not a big deal. This is for me. It's my charger. I keep it in my vehicle, and I use it for me, and it works fine for that sort of thing, the way I have it. And it will continue to charge until it reaches fully charged, whether it's a Ryobi battery or the other style. So as you can see, everything works really good. So now let's 
let's look at the electrical, which is the main thing I want to do. This is all hooked up here, so you get an idea of the scale of how big this is and how small it is compared to their charger. And it fits on top of the battery instead of the battery having to be put into it like this. If I design, I could design the box so that the box would sit down and this would go on it, but this is top heavy. I thought that for such a small unit, I could put it in this way, I'm better off. And that it's bottom heavy. So with the long cord, this is about two, two foot long cord, I can plug this into a cigarette lighter on the dash. And I should be able to set this down on the battery, on the seat, on the dash, wherever I want. As long as it sits flat or sits to where it's stable, this thing isn't going to get tipped over or tipsy from the top because it's so bottom heavy from the battery. So I preferred it being this fitting on top of the battery instead of the battery dropping into it. On theirs, because the base is so heavy and all that, they do it the opposite way. And it's so bulky. So that makes this thing a little better. It also takes up a lot less space in the vehicle because it is smaller. So let's look at the electrical parts of this thing. So you can kind of get an idea of what you need to buy, what components you need in order to make this. Um, let's take a quick look first at the electrical diagram before we get into some of those details. So I'm going to pull this off. And like I said, I, the box is going to be a little different. The main guts of this thing all fit on this platform. There's my receptacle for the battery to be plugged into. My meter, volt amp meter. There's my boost converter DC to DC and these are my electrical connections all done right here and here this is all 12 volt here and this is all 21 volt this is all before you go into the inverter so this is the power cord going in here it's coming out both of them go in positive negative into the input of the inverter or the converter and then on the output this is all 21 volt so uh, and by having these lever type connectors, it made it real easy to plug the wires in when I got done. And I can control the manage the wires so much better with these things. I really like these. This is the first project where I used these. And I was taking things apart and putting them together. This thing really is very nice the way it works. I'm very happy with these type of connectors. So uh, don't be afraid to use them. These are 30 amp connectors. So... We're only going 4 amps at the most in this thing, so there's not going to be a problem with them being able to absorb all that. And they only cost a quarter or 50 cents a piece to use them. So, probably in all reality, you add a couple of dollars in simplistic stuff that you add onto this in the wood, you'll still be well under $20 making this thing uh, without any problem. And I can now, because it's made this way, I can take one component if something happens and unplug it from here because of these levers. I can unplug it and plug a new one in and be off and running again. So it's modular being able to take it apart and put it together at this point. So everything, nothing is really soldered here except the motherboard itself has to have solder connections on there for the wiring. So I just put short strands of water on there like this. This is an old one. This actually burned up on me and when I was making this thing. It got too hot. And that's one of the things I want to talk about. Now, on, the, on this here, I don't have it, but I have them ordered. Is the only reason you don't see it. And the wiring diagram doesn't show it. But I have a fan on the back. It's going to go in here. And wherever this meter is, it's just going to be an opening. And this is going to be recessed in so there's air flow around it. So when it blows in here, it's going to come through the box, across the board where all the heat is, everything generated, and push it all out the front around the meter coming out. So hopefully, once I've enclosed this, that fan will help control the temperature in here to not overheat. I put the heat sink on there. That helped it from burning up on me. But I think that once I enclose it, I think I'm going to need that little extra. So I'll get into what that fan is and how it works uh, as I explain what's going on here. So. 12 volt here, the plug-in that plugs into your cigarette lighter, goes across. This fuse is built into the plug-in. Right here on this 12 volt, these black and white wire here, that's all 12 volts going into my boost converter. I'll tap into these two and have the fan 
tapped into the 12 volts and it'll run off the 12 volts. So the fan will run only when this is plugged in to a power source from the plug-in. Otherwise the fan will not run. But once you plug it in, it will run all the time. As long as there's power going to here, it'll also be power going to that. The booster coming out, I will adjust it to 21 volts to go for these batteries here. That's what they charge to is 21 volts. I adjusted one time adjustment on this, on the adjustment screw to 21 volts. The output for the amp meter, the negative comes out of the booster and goes into the meter for the amp part. There's two wires that control the amp meter, uh, one black and one red. The black comes out of the booster and goes to the black on this amp meter. The red one coming out of the amp meter goes to the negative on your battery terminal here. So this goes in, this one goes into the booster. The other side of this amp meter is the voltmeter and it has three wires. The black wire you don't need because this black here is doing all the, uh, the grounding for you. You don't need it in this version. It's used for a different type that we don't need here and I, I don't need to explain it. So for the voltmeter the, the voltage comes out of the boost converter at 12 volts and it comes around and goes into the positive terminal on the battery to give 12 volts from here to here. We do tap into that wire, that 21 volt wire, with the voltmeter, yellow and red, both. That way it will then read the voltage on this wire here, which should be 21 volts being pushed toward here. Now obviously if the battery is in the state of discharge, it might show only 19 volts and 19.1 and 2. And as that goes up on the voltage till it reaches that max voltage of 28 volts, which is what this is doing, pushing 28 volts, the, the, volt, the amps will be dropping off at that same time. So this is the wiring. It's pretty simple. Everything fits very compactly onto this receptacle base. So the base is the receptacle for your Ryobi batteries. And I've managed to put all the wiring here to wire everything into this small space. So once I close this in, it'll make a nice strong, nice small package that fits on the battery nice and easy and doesn't help, it doesn't take up more footprint than the battery does itself. So when you're charging it, you don't need an extra flat spot somewhere to actually charge it. You can just set this anywhere, even on its side if you wanted to. And it will still charge it up. So it makes it really easy to be able to charge a battery up in a tight quarters like in a service vehicle. And be able to set this anywhere to charge it up. So that's how the wiring works pretty well. And the resistor, like I said, for the status of this, it's something I'm not going to use. If you want to use it, you can. You can think about how you want to do yours, but I think mine is going to be pretty durable when I get done. The only thing left to design is that once I get the box designed, and this will just, the box will be made, and this will just slide in from the bottom and screw it in place to hold this in. If I want to service it, I would pull this out. Uh, this will be set up at, right at the place wherever I cut a hole into my top so that I can look through that hole and see this voltmeter volt amp meter but it'll also be open for all the air to be able to come out of it from the fan back here so this will be just a separate part that will drop on there screw in place and then you can pick it up and move it around using this because this is attached here but to work on it you can take it apart real easily and be able to service this if you need to for some reason if something goes wrong that's the whole thing in a nutshell I think it's going to work very well once I get the box made for it um, it's not going to be anything fancy, but when I, once you see it, I think you'll like it. And I think that uh, you might want to make one yourself. Actually, if you're going to be out and about and you use the Ryobi battery uh, for all your power tools, this will be nice for those emergency times when all of a sudden you run out of batteries before you run out of work. This will be able to help you charge up batteries. And at 4 amps, I'll be able to charge my 5 amp battery in about an hour and 15 minutes thereabouts uh, so it won't take too long to to charge the batteries up using this so it's a good way of doing it now I will tell you I can't remember if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video or not so I'll tell you now just as we close you don't have to build your own you can just buy it 
and use what I would do if I wasn't going to build my own or I couldn't build it. What I would probably do to be able to get by with that is I would take a regular battery charger, a 110 volt, volt one, you can buy those for around $20 used. Then I would buy a uh, power inverter, a, 20, a 200 watt and with a cigarette lighter plug in so that that plugs into the cigarette lighter. Then you take the 110 outlet that comes out of the booster and plug your battery charger into that, mount everything on one simple board and then you have something that is a little bulky, but you'll be able to do the same thing that this does. Not as efficiently. You have about a 35% loss doing it that way because you're taking that voltage and converting it from DC to AC and then back to DC. So you're going to end up losing 30-35%, I suspect, in the whole process. So, But if your car is running and you're just charging... It doesn't matter. It's going to charge it up. And with that factory charger from the 110 version, those things charge at about 50 watts. So you'll charge that thing up in, again, about an hour and 15 minutes. It puts out about the same amount of amperage into that as this thing does. Just not as efficiently as this does. But the power is endless, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be as efficient as this is. But that's how it works. Do you have any questions about it? If you have any suggestions on how to make it a little better, let me know. Once I get it done completely, we'll go over everything and answer any questions you might have at that time. But you actually have enough information that you should be able to make your own at this point between the last video and this one. Even before you see my finished version, you should be able to make your own the way you want to make it. Do you have to use uh, this? You could actually just put it in your own case. For example, if I really wanted to, I could take a regular fishing tackle like this box and gut it out. I could put two receptacles on it so that I could take two batteries, plug one here and one here into this, and then I would have my plug-in that I would open it up, take it out, and plug that in, and I could charge two batteries at once. Because if you put up two of these, on the same board and run it off the 12 volts to two of these run two circuits two voltmeters you could run everything off of one power cord and you'd only be pulling eight amps so these things are designed to do up to 15 amps same as your circuit on most cigarette lighters they run on a 15 amp circuit some on a 10 but most of them run on 15 i believe and this thing is only going to pull eight maximum so you can run two batteries on a battery charger if you wanted to design a two battery charger instead of a compact one like this you could do that out of something like this so open your mind up go outside the box and start thinking about how you would want to do yours and how many chargers you want out of yours and build your own so um but it's easy to do it doesn't cost much at all and to make a dual one would actually be probably easily under $35. They'd be a little cheaper because you're only using one power cord. So you'll save a few dollars on that. So all in all, you'll end up with a pretty good unit to charge dual batteries off of one cigarette lighter if you want to do that. And that would be up to you. Again, you could run two 110 battery chargers off of a 200 watt inverter if you wanted to do it that way because most of those power inverters that are 200 watts have two plug-ins so you could plug in two of those and charge two batteries at once too two is always better than one you know how that goes so anyway that's everything in a nutshell i think i shut went over everything i hope i didn't forget if i did leave it in the comments <clears throat> but this should get you off and running if you want to make this leave your comments any questions about this or just leave them in the comments. I do read everything. If you like this video or you learned something here, hit that like button. It let's me know that I'm doing something right. Most importantly, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Thanks. We'll see you guys again pretty soon.